One day some twisted son of a bitch is bound to teach you a thing or two about living in this cold, godforsaken world. TEPCO engineers are trying hard to decommission their Fukushima Daiichi plant, but they say a leak in a filtering system is the latest hurdle they're facing. Engineers found the holes in a tank that stores contaminated water. It's part of a new filtering system called ALPS. TEPCO officials say it can filter most types of radioactive material. TEPCO engineers inspected the system over the weekend. They found water had leaked from one of the stainless steel tanks. They emptied the tank and found small holes. They say the welding may be to blame. They plan to place a camera inside the tank to examine it in more detail. Nuclear regulators in Japan are trying to learn from the mistakes of the past. They're introducing a set of stricter safety guidelines for plants across the country. The guidelines from Japan's Nuclear Regulation Authority oblige operators to take steps to deal with severe accidents. Up until now, such measures have been voluntary. Up until now, such measures have been voluntary. The guidelines ask operators to draw up emergency scenarios for stronger earthquakes and tsunami. The regulators plan to start receiving applications for restarting plants on July 8th, the day the guidelines are scheduled to take effect. The operators of six plants are preparing to apply to go back online. You're going to need a bigger boat. The regulators say they'll need at least six months to screen their applications. But power company executives may have to wait longer than that. They'll also need to get the approval of the governments that host the plants. Reactors across the country went offline one by one after the nuclear accident two years ago in Fukushima. Government leaders allowed one plant to restart operations last year. When we come back, Toby McGuire debuts a new clothing line for people taking naps. The Weather Channel cancels all upcoming weather-related programming out of respect for tornado victims.
Researchers in Japan have made a discovery that could help clean up the air we breathe. They found a natural substance that can neutralize common pollutants. Now a manufacturer is trying to develop equipment so the product can be put to work. Representatives of a large corporation based in Tokyo visit a factory in Kushiro, a city in Hokkaido. This is what they've come to see. Oil extracted from the needles of saccharine fir trees that grow in the area. It smells like a fresh forest. It's amazing technology. The oil is attracting attention because it neutralizes air pollutants like nitrogen dioxide. The gas is found in all kinds of sources, especially car exhaust. Staff at a national research institute placed highly concentrated nitrogen dioxide in a bag. When the pollutant came into contact with a special solution, the solution turned yellow. But when the two substances were poured through a filter soaked in oil from fir trees, the solution remained clear. An element in the oil had bonded with the nitrogen dioxide and neutralized it. Researchers tested the oil of more than 20 different types of trees. They found the oil from the saccharine fir removed almost all of the nitrogen dioxide. In 1954, a typhoon wiped out Hokkaido's forests. To ensure a stable supply of wood, saccharine firs were planted in large quantities. The trees can withstand the island's low temperatures. Now they make up nearly half the trees in Hokkaido's 1.5 million hectares of planted forests. Masaaki Yamazaki heads a forestry company in Kushiro. He had long wanted to make more use of the saccharine fir. But unaware of the needles' value, he had been throwing them out. I'm surprised by what the needles can do. If we go about marketing them the right way, they have a lot of potential. In many parts of the world, air pollution is getting worse. So now is an ideal time to develop a device that uses the tree's oil to clean the air. And that's exactly what a major manufacturer of household goods is doing. The manufacturer's device extracts oil from the fur needles. First, the staff ground the needles and place them inside an evaporator. The oil from the needles is distilled. The result is a highly concentrated, good quality extract. The next challenge will be to find a way to put the oil to work, removing pollutants from the air. Hokkaido's fur trees have a special function. As well as making the air fragrant, they actually purify the air. These trees with their natural air cleaning properties present us with a good opportunity. Manufacturers are also starting to think about exporting the product to countries like China, where pollution is rampant. Science and business are cooperating to put the saccharine fur to use to improve the quality of life. This brings profits to companies, and for people in polluted areas, a breath of fresh air. The world's coral reefs are diverse ecosystems teeming with sea life, but global warming and pollution are threatening their habitats. A marine biologist has developed a device for culturing corals and it's making a splash in Indonesia. Manado, Indonesia is a diverse destination. The area boasts one of the world's finest coral reefs. This stretch of ocean has more than 600 different kinds of coral. Three quarters of the world's coral reefs are found here. But for how long? As the globe gets warmer and the water more polluted, the coral is dying. In the past 10 years, the coral reefs in Indonesia have shrunk by a third. But in Japan, a marine biologist has been trying to regenerate them. Professor Mineo Okamoto researches at Tokyo University of Marine Science and Technology. He's been working on this project for 15 years. It looks as if it's on the way to extinction. We have to do something now. All coral lays eggs at the same time, once a year. To keep growing, the larvae must attach themselves to rocks. But a lot of the developing coral die. They're either eaten by fish or they don't quickly find a place to settle on. To help them survive, Okamoto developed the CSD, Coral Settlement Device. These ceramic implements were configured and dropped into the ocean. They remain on the seafloor, where different types of coral larvae can attach themselves to the device. 
the larvae are only a few millimeters long and fit into the grooves. This illustrates how the larvae are safe from fish. A year later, the coral has grown to the size of a human fingertip. The next step is to relocate them to a rock formation. This will enable many types of coral to survive. Okamoto hopes this invention helps bring back the coral reefs in Manado. At the end of March, Okamoto and his team checked on the implements. Some environmental conditions had worsened, so they wanted to see whether the coral was still growing. Okay, I go. If it had grown properly, the coral would be visible. And it was. A bright yellow formation spread before them. Other devices also held newly grown coral of varying colors. The team confirmed the growth of 80 different types. Okamoto and his team started relocating the coral. They removed portions one by one, hoping to cover the side of the rock. <laughs> More coral than expected has stuck to the devices. It's incredibly important to have coral in our oceans. All kinds of fish, shrimp, crabs and other creatures live in coral formations. I want to help by bringing back more coral. Hopes are high that Japanese know-how has helped science take a big step forward in preserving a vital part of ocean life. Both uh, China and the EU, a bit of a tit for tat here. They're both uh, alleging that the other is uh, dumping sherry. But uh, Chinese Commerce Ministry official is uh, determined now to resolve a dispute over solar panels with the European Union through dialogue. The EU has imposed provisional anti-dumping tariffs of about 12% on Chinese-made solar panels. EU officials say China is exporting solar panels at unfairly lower prices. Commerce Ministry spokesperson Xin Dangyang says officials from the Chinese government and from the solar panel industry have been in regular contact with EU officials. We believe the two sides can reach an agreement that is acceptable to both through discussions. Shen also discussed China's investigation into alleged dumping of European wine on the Chinese market. The investigation began one day after the EU imposed anti-dumping tariffs on Chinese-made solar panels. He indirectly denied the allegation that it was a countermeasure. He said Chinese winemakers had long been asking for an investigation.